that's called the standard deviation. I'm sorry, Brian, you can continue quoting. Um, just like we're making the claim that on the average, you're going to get 1.5 heads, or we're going to see it physically right in the middle there, 1.5 heads, which is right in the middle. It's expected to be in the middle in the case of a balance or symmetric type of a picture. But when you flip three coins, you don't always get 1.5 heads. Sometimes you get three heads. Sometimes you get one head. Sometimes you get it, it varies. And we know from chapter three that measuring the variation of a bunch of data is quite important to, if you want to have a, you know, a good and sophisticated interpretation. So the question, what is the amount of variation? Well, we call the sigma, we call the S squared in chapter three because we were talking about a sample, but now we're talking about the whole population, the whole set of random variables. We use the Greek letter lowercase sigma to represent the variance. This is the variance of the random variable. Variance of random variable x. We call it, if you want to make an abbreviation, V of x. But the formula, and this really I wouldn't try to claim to be argued by common, we can't guess it. Now, guessing the answer 1.5 is sort of pretty much common sense. Guessing the answer here I wouldn't say is common sense. The formula is, you take, it's similar to the formula, look at the formula from chapter three, which everybody seems to have done correctly on the previous test. It's, you take the, the x minus the x bar squared over this formula I'm referring to. Well, the formula is similar. You take each x, each outcome, we have the x's, Minus, we're not going to call the average x bar, now the average is mu. We're still going to square it because we want to make sure that we have negative signs cancel, don't cancel with the positives. But we're not going to divide by n because there's no n here. We're not talking about, we're talking about a general situation like, like, like over here. There's no n, it's just a bunch of numbers. There's no, no we're not dealing with binomial. So how does the n function, well each number has an equal chance of showing up. I'm not really explaining this that carefully, but if you want to have a, so likewise, you multiply by how likely that particular x is going to show up. For those x to show up a lot, they contribute a lot to the formula. For those x to show up a little bit, they contribute a little bit. So you multiply this, this calculation, you weight it according to how often, but there's no n minus 1 on the bottom that would make no sense. So let's try to apply that formula to the current set of numbers, because you're going to do the same thing for other homeworks and other spinner parts, but let's do it for this set of numbers. Well, the first x is 0, minus the average of 1.5, you square that, and how often does zero show up? 12% of the time, roughly, it's like one out of eight. What's the next possibility? X equals one, minus how far is that from the same average, 1.5, because the average is 1.5 for the whole example. You square that, and multiply that by three out of eight, and the same thing gets applied to two, minus 1.5, sloppiness, squared, times, again, three out of eight, because two shows up three out of eight times, and finally, the last possibility is 3 minus 1.5 squared times 1 out of 8. And this whole thing will come out to 0.75. The reason why I know it's 0.75 is because I happen to have a shortcut that I'm going to be showing you in a second, but the shortcut says it. So you can do this, of course, verify this on a calculator, it comes out to 0.75. But after you calculate the variance, what do you think a logical thing to do next would be? What's the next thing to do after the variance? Yes, Lord. You want to calculate the more realistic standard deviation, which is the square root of this artificial square. So the next thing is called the standard deviation of the random variable x, which is going to have the symbol sigma by itself without the squared. And if you want a formula, simply the square root of the variance. Or the square root of this whole giant formula, uh, x minus x, x minus mu, mu squared times p of x. In our case, it's the square root of 75. So what's the square root of 0.75? So 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81. So something like 0.83, 84. What does it come out to exactly? What is the square root of 0.75? Somebody please do that. What are you doing it? 0.87. 0.87? Okay, 0.87 is the approximate answer. Now, what was the shortcut formula that, again, could only be used for the binomial, because this is, in fact, binomial. Here we are flipping coins. We know the n is 3, etc. cetera. We don't know. We'll it down. Here the n is 3. The chance of a head is a half. So what's the shortcut formula? The shortcut formula for the sigma, I'll give, you, I'll give it to both of them. The shortcut formula for the sigma squared is n times p, which is the same as the previous formula, but now multiply by 1 minus p. This, by the way, I can't explain in the common sense terms that I'm not going to bother. And the sigma is simply the square root of the n times p times 1 minus p. All right. 
And finally, in terms of an example, the n is 3, the p is a half, the 1 minus a half is also a half. That much is 3 times a half times a half, 3 quarters, which is 0.75. Which is why I claim the answer is 0.75. And the answer to this one is the square root of 0.75, which was 87. OK, so that really takes, we've covered today the following. We covered the, how to, well, we reviewed the binomial. I introduced the spike diagram to make a picture out of this stuff. We talked about the most important part of today's formula, the E of x formula, which is gotten by actually multiplying the x times the P of x. And then I showed you the formula for the variance of a random variable, which is a little more complicated, but it's just grinded it out. It's not, it's not higher mathematics. And finally, I showed you a couple of shortcuts in, this, in the very special case where the x happens to be a, a binomial random variable, which will not work for those two examples on the left side of the board, but will work for binomial. Yes, David? Will the shortcut always work? Did we always use that? Now, if it's binomial, the shortcut works. Like this example here is binomial, so it works. But in this example here, you can't use it. There's no way. No one's nobody can tell you it's binomial. You can't use it. So if it's not binomial, we have to use the regular form? Right, right. And again, the test, I give you relatively small numbers. Not gonna, you know, it won't be like 20 lines long. Okay. So that